Um, welcome to the uh, webinar today on uh, using growth indicators to set goals. Uh, I'll cover a couple of the things that Brittany was going to cover uh, to get us started. Basically, um, uh, let me get into this. This is not the stuff I usually go over. So this is me, John Harms. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of Millennium Systems International. Uh, started the company back in 1987. Uh, loved to educate and and, and uh, provide uh, information that basically are going to help you grow. Uh, that's where my passion at. Brittany, who will be assisting me today, uh, once she gets her microphone going, uh, is basically uh, one of the educators that we have, very knowledgeable, and she'll actually help uh, facilitate by taking any of your questions today via the chat window. Uh, I'm just going to read this because, again, she usually goes over this. So if you have any questions, please use the instant chat to ask the host. The chat panel is located in the bottom right corner of your screen. The presenter's panel will list all attendees, hosts, and presenter. And the presenter has placed you on mute upon entry to the webinar to prevent interruptions during the webinar. Uh, but again, you are welcome to use the chat window to ask questions. And hopefully towards the end, we'll have some time to um, answer some specific questions that you might have. All right. so. Uh, so today's class is about using uh, the growth indicators to set goals. Uh, basically broke it up into four steps. Step one is uh, important to me. It's, it's about establishing trust. Before you lay out these goals, um, for me, when I go around to different salons, uh, one of the recurring uh, problems that I see is lack of trust. Um, the two biggest problems, and it's not just in salons, to be honest with you, it's any business. Uh, the two biggest problems to me that you've got to attack uh, before you can really have successful goal setting is, uh, number one, establishing that trust, and number two, communication, and communicating the numbers and the goals. Uh, fixing that stuff is paramount to being able to really get a team that's engaged and excited and, and, and wrapping their minds and, and um, purpose around uh, the goals that you set. So we'll talk about establishing trust. Then we're going to go into individual goals, uh, how you can set individual goals in Millennium spend about 20 minutes to a half hour on that, and then team goals uh, for the entire team, again, about 20 to 30 minutes on that. And then the last step is monitoring growth. So once we've set these goals, how do we monitor them? We'll cover the key reports that you want to run. So you'll get a lot of information on this webinar. I will say that this webinar is going to be pretty fast-paced. There's a lot of th things to cover. Um, I'm going to show a few of the reports, but I, uh, we're not going to have time to go into every report but we'll definitely jump into some reports so that you can see some real statistics and, and get some meaning, meaningful information um, out of this webinar. Um, the other thing I want to mention, too, is that this, these are kind of laid out as steps. To be honest with you, they're more just segments of setting goals. Um, in reality, I would probably set team goals first uh, so that I understand my, what, I, what I want to accomplish as a business and then let that be what leads me down the path to individual goals. So let's not get caught up in, oh, okay, i got to do individual goals first, then team goals. Quite frankly, like I said, I would probably do team goals first, then individual goals. But for the webinar, this is just the way we laid it out to make sure we cover the different segments of goal setting. So again, part of establishing trust is um, making sure that b before you go and ask somebody to hit certain milestones on retail or get certificate sales or service sales, um, making sure that they have all the resources they need. Um, you know, have you given them the necessary skills? If you're asking them to increase average ticket, have you trained them on best practices of increasing average ticket? Have you considered, you know, writing recommendations out uh, uh, and handing it to the client as they go to the front desk with some product recommendations? Um, and then making sure that you talk to them about uh, that you're there to help them uh, accomplish the goal. So you're not just going to set a goal and turn them loose. You're going to set goals. You're going to monitor those goals periodically. You're going to give them uh, what they need to do to succeed. So, uh, And we'll talk about what those goals will be around. So the obvious things are revenue, but you're going to see one of my passions and what we're going to talk about today is really about setting goals on more forward-focused things that will increase revenue. Um, and we call those the growth indicators. Um, the other thing about uh, not setting goals, 
when I first started the company, I really didn't even have goals for Bob and some of the salespeople. It was actually Bob that came up to me and said, you know, uh, how am I doing? I said, you're doing great. He's like, um, well, how do I know I'm doing great? So I'm like, no, you're doing great. So he wanted very specific, you know, how many clients do I need to touch in a month? How many, you know, sales would you like me to do in a quarter? And so we started to establish those things just because, you know, I was so focused on building the software and making sure that we did a quality job there that I really wasn't focusing as much on sales. I knew the sales would come when we had a good product. But it was Bob that actually reached out to me and said, you know, I really need goals. And if you think about it, without goals, you're asking your team to really win without showing them the score. Right, so yeah, it's kind of it's great for them to be able to uh, monitor and and see that they're actually um, chipping away at uh, what's going to make them successful and ultimately the salon successful. And at the end of the day, goals motivate and then and they give purpose. Besides just you know the right brain side of things, uh, cutting hair, doing massages, uh, doing those things that they love, uh, to be able to actually validate that they're being successful and uh, uh, attaining their goals is very important. And, and Millennium. Um, has all the things that you need to do it successfully. And, and probably after I show you how easy it is to set team goals, you'll probably be pretty frustrated that you didn't do it December 25th for this year. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that we are, it's never too late. So we're in the middle of April. Um, I'm going to show you some things that are going to allow you to have goals ready to go for May 1st. So you could actually, you know, you, you missed, you know, the first couple months, few months. But from May on, you could actually get these goals established and start doing these things right away. So I think that's important to understand, too. This is not a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of things we built into Millennium to automate this goal setting for you. Uh, in this slide, is just basically talking about what we're going to show you today, highlighting the importance of goals, establishing milestones, which in Millennium are monthly. But, um, but you'll see I'll talk to you about showing uh, the progress towards those goals, um, in my opinion, at least weekly and measuring progress frequently, establishing accountability so that they understand the importance of hitting those goals, and, and educating the team on what we call the growth indicators. So anybody that's taken any of my webinars or come to our, uh, our, our user group, or we call it the Millennium Experience now, um, which is June 22nd to the 24th this year in sunny Fort Lauderdale, uh, you'll always hear me talk about growth indicators because when I learned about those in 1997 and established uh, those into Millennium and actually Salon Solutions at that time, uh, it really changed um, really what Millennium was all about and how people could grow. So now we actually were able to provide people with these forward-focused growth indicators that would lead to growth. And, and I knew that if I could provide a a, a software that was solid and had the reports that people need but ultimately help them grow, that was my ultimate goal and obviously would establish the success that Millennium has had for 26 years. So, um, so let's talk about what those growth indicators are. The growth indicators, basically productivity is the sum of the whole. So there's really only five major growth indicators. And so we'll start here with average ticket. So average ticket is obviously for each individual service provider. Um, what their total ticket is, which would include service and retail. Um, but within that, you could even break up what is your average service ticket in Millennium and what is your average retail uh, ticket in Millennium. And then, obviously, the sum is average full ticket. So that doesn't have an industry average. You'll see that on a couple of these growth indicators, I've uh, included the industry average for you to gauge yourself. Um, but an average ticket, it really depends um, whether you're a walk-in salon, whether you're a spa, whether you're a big uh, salon in a uh, you know uh, in a mall, or you're a salon out in a in a strip mall, or you're a salon out by itself. You know, there's some people that could charge. Uh, you know, Robert Crow means loves the fact that he can uh, charge three hundred dollars uh, on as an average ticket uh, out in California. Um, that's not necessarily going to fly in a small town in Indiana. So there's not an uh, an industry average on average ticket. What I tell people on average ticket, though, is just know what yours are, and we'll show you the reports that are going to tell you exactly what those average tickets are, and then just try to increase them in five to ten dollar increments. So we'll get into that a little bit more. So average ticket is a growth indicator that you want to track, and you want your staff to understand what their average ticket is. The next one is frequency of visit. Frequency of visit to me is the most important growth indicator and the most important. Um, focus, in my opinion, in the next 90 days that you should have. 
frequency of visit is really about how often do the people that have already showed me loyalty and love my salon or my spa, um, how often are they coming in? And the industry average is, believe it or not, 4.88. So you figure, you know, close to five. If you ask a salon, they'll tell you eight to 12. Um, and you're able to show them with Millennium that that's not entirely true. It's what we'd probably like to have, but it's not typically um, the reality. Um, You'll also see in Millennium we have the ability to give you frequency of visit by service class. That's important, and we'll touch on that. Because the, diff the, s the frequency that I would expect uh, a client that comes in uh, solely for nails is going to be very different than the frequency of visit that I'd expect for somebody who comes in for haircuts. And again, different from somebody that would come in for massage if I do spa. So understanding frequency of visit as a whole is important because we want to be seeing those clients, in my opinion, for one reason or another. Um, every four to six weeks, uh, which would make them an eight to 12 time um, a year client. So how do we get there? And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Um, the key there that you hear, you'll hear me talk about is pre-booking. And Millennium gives you several different ways to track pre-book. And you'll notice that it actually shows you pre-book percentage right in the appointment book. It shows you in the monitoring station. It shows you on the MA200 report that we're going to cover. So we've done a pretty good job of integrating all this growth information throughout the system to give you the best uh, chance of success. The next one is new clients per month. So you're going to work hard. You're going to uh, get client referrals. You're going you're to uh, you know, advertise and try to bring in new clients. So you want to track how well you're doing at bringing in new clients each month. Um, and then once you spend all that money and all that effort and you bring in the new clients, the next most important thing is how well are we at new client retention? The industry average on that for the first repeat visit is around 35 to 40 percent. And again, I'll show you the reports to run to find out where you're at. If you're a walk-in salon, that may not be as high. If you're a salon or a spa in a resort, it's not going to be as high. So, but if you just take the industry as a whole, as an average, um, a little over the, uh, than a, a little more than a third of the clients that come in come in a second time. Um, and the goal on that is typically around 50%. So your goal is typically, let's try to get in at least half the people that come in to come back a second time. A bunch of different ways you can do that in Millennium. Uh, you could do it with uh, our client loyalty system, which actually rewards pre-booking on the first visit. Um, you can give them a 5 to $10 worth of retail. If they come back that second time, well worth it. A lot of different cool things you can do. So my thing is to make sure that this webinar doesn't become three hours, because they, I would probably talk on this stuff for three hours. That's why you got to come down to the experience in Fort Lauderdale, and we'll talk about this stuff a lot. But um, I have to keep this to an hour and a half, so we're not going to go over all the ways that you can fix these things, but at least I'm going to show you the ways that you can track them and what reports to run. So we work hard to bring in new clients. We um, have 35 to 40% new client retention, so we need to be tracking that. And each individual service provider needs to know how well they're doing. A lot of times we find out when we go into a salon or a spa, uh, we're feeding the weak, is what I call it. We'll feed uh, new clients to the people that aren't as busy, but then if we're not tracking their retention, basically losing those clients. They might only have a 20% new client retention, so one out of five people uh, they're actually keeping, and four of them are walking away. So we're, uh, you know, we need to fix that problem before we continue to flood that person with new clients and lose them. So a lot of, a lot of cool things you can do with that. The next one is repeat client retention. So you know, once you have clients that have been coming for anywhere from six visits to a year, you consider those repeat clients. And that industry average is around 70%. Uh, the goal on that that I hear people talk about is about 85%. If you can keep 85% of the clients that have already continued to come to you, uh, that's important to monitor. And again, monitoring by service provider because you, know, you, you might have a ser service provider at 90%. You might have another one at 60%. It's important to watch these things. Um, a lot of things happen in the service provider's lives. They could be going through a lot of things personally, and all of a sudden they're just not the same. If you're watching these numbers, you'll start to see them decline. There's some other uh, things where this all ties together too where retention could start to slip because that service provider has become so successful that their book is 90 to 100 percent book, you know, a week out, two weeks out. I can't get in on a Saturday, and they start to lose those clients. So a lot of a lot of great information by monitoring um, these growth indicators. 
Um, uh, the 15% attrition that you'll allow, uh, the difference between 100% and the 85% goal I mentioned, is a you know, reasonable amount of uh, a percentage to allow people to either move, maybe they move after they've been coming into you for a while to get a new job, uh, and unfortunately die. So <laughs> they can either move or die, but otherwise we want them to continue to come back to our salon. And then all these sum up to show how productive you are. And Millennium, right in the appointment book, shows you what percent each column is uh, productive that day. It shows you at the bottom as a summary what, how productive they are. And again, the ME200, these other reports that we're going to talk about, will show their productivity as well. All right, so I know we spent some time here just making sure you understand the growth indicators. A lot of you have gotten used to this if you've been my, on my webinars. To me, even if you went over this once a quarter, it's never a bad thing to be reminded of how important these are. Um, to the right, actually, I wrote car analogy. So uh, the analogy I give about setting goals is, you know, if I went to 100 salons, 100 of them that set goals would set goals on revenue. I want to hit a million dollars this year. I want to do $400,000 in retail. Susie, we really want to see her hit $120,000 in, in service revenue this year, and we'd really like to see her hit $32,000 in retail. Um, you know, these are the things that people typically set goals on. And while I 100% agree that even at my company we set goals on revenue, um, I talk about revenue as being rear view mirror mentality though. Um, if you don't set goals also on these growth indicators, you're really missing out on the opportunity to be forward focused and really get uh, the, the salon moving in the right direction. So the analogy is basically um, you know, setting goals on revenue is like driving your car down the road and all you do is keep looking in the rear view mirror because revenue is based on what I did yesterday, right? However however well we did at booking Saturday or booking Friday, um, it's in the past, but now I'm measuring that revenue. I can't affect it. What I love about these growth indicators is I call it in the car analogy, windshield, you know, looking down the, out the windshield, forward focus at all the opportunity that's there. And by um, average, uh, monitoring average ticket, frequency of visit, new clients per month, new client retention, repeat client retention, and overall productivity, now I can predict what that revenue is going to be uh, next week and the week after and or affect that revenue. I can't affect Friday and Saturday. I can affect today, number one, and I can affect tomorrow and next week. So that's what is so important about this. Set your revenue goals. That's easy. But I want to really push the fact that the way to grow 15 to 20 percent this year would be to look at these growth indicators and monitor those because that's basically predicting your future revenue. All right, so that's the kind of lecture part of it. Now let's, uh, I know everybody loves to just dive right in, um, so we're going to just skip over this. It's, it's about setting up um, smart goals. We've all heard of this, making them specific, measurable, attainable, realistic or relevant, and time bound. And all of the goal setting in Millennium accomplishes um, these factors. Okay, so let's talk about setting up individual goals. Uh, we're going to cover the navigation center, and I'm going to make sure that you guys know how to turn that on. We're going to cover basically where you go into data, employees, and set some goals. We're going to cover about four reports that I think are important for the service provider statistics. Uh, we're going to touch on what if, which is an application that came with Millennium. A lot of people forget they have it, maybe didn't even install it. I'll show it to you today. I think it's so important when you're sitting down with individuals and setting their goals to let them see financially how it makes a difference to them, um, get them to buy into it by what's important to them, and obviously their own success is important. So, and it ties into the success of the salon. And we'll talk about the monitoring station. Um, and uh, I'm, I have a little note there to make sure that you set the security so the service provider can only see their own total. So, uh, again, trying to make sure that Millennium is set up in a way that allows you to share information, but only to the extent that you want to. So you may not want uh, everybody to look at Susie's goals. Maybe John can only see his goals and his totals. So you're able to do that in Millennium. So we're going to cover that stuff right now. So I'm going to flip over into Millennium. Oh, that would be what if. Here's Millennium, and it logged out on me. Hey, John, can you hear me now? <laughs> Yes, we can hear you. I'm so sorry. I'm, I just wanted to make sure that was fixed. Didn't want to interrupt your flow, but just wanted to make sure everything was working. 
That's fine. That's fine. I know I, you do such a great job in, uh, doing the introduction, so I know I kind of blew through that, but uh, we cover the main points. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I will make so, sure that I close out appropriately. Have fun, John. All right. Thanks. Um, so, so basically, um, right now I'm in the navigation center. So there's a way to make sure that this is turned on. You can manually bring it up uh, using the icons up top here. But if you want, you can actually have this navigation come up um, all the time by going under Data, Business Information and Preferences. General is the category under Options, so Preferences, Options. And then you select General here. And it says Show Navigation Center at Startup. So you want to set that to Yes. Okay, so that was under Business Information. Preferences, Options, General, and that's where you can say yes, and that that monitoring state or the the navigation center will come up automatically like this. And the reason I like that is by default, um, it's actually showing you what I said is the most important thing in my opinion in the next 60 to 90 days to help you grow is monitoring that pre-book percentage. So we can see this particular salon in January was at 30 percent, February 31 dropped down to 28 percent in March, and back up to 31 percent in April. But this is going to allow you to make sure that you're, you're mar marching forward towards that 8 to 12 visits a year uh, by getting people to pre-book before they leave. So that's one of the things I like. You also get some really good um, other statistics on no-shows and number of guests and, and things. So make sure you have your navigation center turned on. So let's go in and set some employee goals. So that's under data, employees, employee information. Once you're in there, I'm going to just go find one of the employees I want to set goals on and just use her or Kathy. Now when you first go to the goals tab located right here in the middle, um, it'll actually take, depending on your salon, uh, this salon has probably 15 years of data in it. But it could take anywhere from 5 to 15 seconds to come up because it just did a ton of calculations, and um, it's going to help you set your goals. So uh, in this case, I went into Kathy. I went to her goals, and it's set for the current year. And it will only show the categories of services that she actually does. Uh, the main one for her would be haircuts and color. So we have coloring right here and haircuts right here. And you can see that her goal uh, in January for color was uh, 6,000. She did 4,000, which was 78% of her goal. Um, in haircut, she was shooting for 6,700. She did 4,400. Again, only 67% uh, of her goal. We go to February, and we see that she made some improvements, got up to 94% of her goal, and 73% of her goal um, for uh, haircuts. Now, would you, to set those, for, your, for you, the actuals might be blank, OK? Uh, what I told you is there's a lot of things that we put in the Millennium, and you're going to see it in the team goals area as well, where we help you set the goals. Because there is some seasonality in most salons. Um, you know, right before Christmas, you might get really busy, and then all of a sudden it's slow in January, or you get a lot of gift cards in January. Um, or let's say uh, uh, July gets a little slow in August, but then you get, or end of August, you get your back to school. So there's things in um, your past history that are going to help you predict your future goals that you could set. So what you can do is if you haven't set this up and your goals are actually blank, you could go in, hit Edit, and go to Automatically Set Goals right here. So for instance, my color goals are already set, but let's just say they weren't. I can come in here and say Automatically Set Goals. And it's saying, okay, what percent growth would you like over the previous year? Now, if you're a new Millennium client, unfortunately, it doesn't know what they did last year. If you used Millennium last year, you're going to be set, and it's going to be very easy. I will show you a couple reports uh, for the existing, or I'm sorry, for the people that didn't have Millennium last year, that if you've had it since January, for instance, we can actually run it and see kind of what your totals have been. Um, but, but if you've got data from last year, this can be very easy. So if your goal is just to increase your business 15%, all you have to do now is hit OK, and it's on, uh, again, it's on the uh, coloring service class. It'll actually blast out your goals every month for the entire year. So if I scroll over into where I don't have, for instance, August, my goal is gonna, for, for Kathy is going to be $5,500. 
um, the month uh, September is fifty six hundred dollars. Um, again, now I go to November, it's all the way up to six thousand. See how it's adjusting based on seasonality for you. So that's really nice. If you've got data, you could set up your employees' goals in probably under a few minutes per employee. Just go in there to the one that you want to set, automatically set goals, set the percent growth you're looking for, and hit OK. Very easy. The other thing that you can do if you haven't already done it is just set an overall goal at the top. What's her goal for the entire year? $170,000 in this case. So you can set it up um, as an overall and then break down how that $170,000 uh, looks per service class. Um, okay. Um, one other button that's pretty interesting too is if I'm setting that those goals manually, I have a sales history for the highlighted class. So if I go in to, for instance, uh, the color, it'll actually show me by month exactly what she did in 2013. So that's going to help me set my goals if I'm just kind of eyeballing it or doing it manually myself. So again, we're giving you the tools, automatically set goals, or look at their sales history to set those goals right here. We also have the same, I'm not going to go into the details because it's really the same, where I can set an overall goal for product sales, retail sales, and even break it down by um, classification if I want. I talked about the importance of setting goals on the growth indicators. So um, in this case, I can actually set my new guest retention goal, my repeat guest retention goal, and then put in the number of visits in a year I think somebody should come in to be considered truly retained. So if they come in less than four times, they're not going to um, be counted towards my um, measurement of how well, for instance, a repeat client um, is being retained. So that, uh, that number, I, th I like to set it conservatively, meaning, you know, I know we'd all love somebody to come in eight times a year, but if you put this to eight, your numbers are going to look really terrible, look like you're not retaining anybody. I think um, even putting this, to be honest with you, probably down at three is acceptable. As long as they come in at least three times a year, they're retained. They're just not coming in at the frequency that we'd uh, like uh, to get that to that eight to 12 times a year. So go ahead and, and make that setting. And you should keep it consistent between employees. Again, this is for a hairstylist. If I was doing this for a nail tech, that could be very different again. I, this might be a 10 uh, or a, you know, an 8 or a 10 if it was a nail tech. Um, it's really up to you to set. But I, I do prefer to be a little conservative as long as that client's coming in three to four times a year. I think they're still retained to your salon. They're just not coming in at a frequency that we'd like. So if we go to other goals, there is where we can set our goal for frequency of visit, productivity. So the goal for Kathy is to stay up around 75% productive. So that basically means if I look at the appointment book, it should be 75% full on any given day or, or more. Um, interesting thing there to monitor is that if somebody gets up to 85 to 95% productivity month over month for at least, say, 90 days, that becomes a flag for you that it could be a potential problem. And the reason that's a problem is, is Kathy's one of the top stylists, and she's so popular now that um, I'm going to her, but I can't get in for seven, eight weeks uh, because she's that busy, especially if I can only come on a Saturday, I can only come on a Friday afternoon. Um, what you'll see is when her productivity gets that high, it's guaranteed that one of the other growth indicators becomes negatively affected. If somebody's at 85 to 95 percent pr productivity for 90 days, you can almost be guaranteed that that frequency of visit is going to start to drop. You can be guaranteed that the number of new clients that she can handle in a month is going to start to drop. And you can probably be guaranteed that the repeat client retention is going to start to drop. Um, so there's a certain equilibrium that you want to get to where you have enough open room in the book to keep new people coming and get people the frequency of visit to go up. Um, uh, but at the same time, if they're getting to the point where they're that busy, you know, 90 days straight, uh, those are really red flags for what? It's time to really consider in increasing her prices or promoting her to a senior stylist where you can almost purposely shed some of those clients, not from the salon, but bring them down to some of the uh, other stylists uh, because you've raised the prices and they don't want to pay, for instance, $80 for a haircut when they're used to paying 60 uh, But that's okay because now we're going to get her back down to 60 to 70% productivity, but at you know, 20, 30, or about 20% more uh, revenue per client and then start to build up that frequency again. And that ultimately allows her to get to that $170,000 in this case 
or the salon to hit their goals because the, there's only so much capacity that you have and so many chairs that you have in a, in a salon or a massage beds in a spa. So keep that in mind. When, and that's why I think it's super important to monitor productivity. You might look at that 90% and go, wow, that's great. But again, watch that frequency of visit go down, which is not great. When we go into what if in a second, I'm going to show you why that's so important because you're going to see what the difference between one or two visits means to a, a salon or a spa. Then you can set uh, your goals on average ticket, so it's set to $75. Uh, average retail ticket is 30 and average overall ticket is $80. So we really let you get down to that granularity of what's our overall all goal, goal per ticket, uh, retail, and um, service. Okay, so that's the individual goal setting. Um, really simple, pretty straightforward. We give you some shortcuts, uh, as I mentioned, to just automatically set those goals that forward focus growth indicator stuff. Now that we've done that, uh, it's important to sit down with the employee, number one. And number two, it's important that we have a way in Millennium that it's easy for that employee to check on their goals. Uh, I don't believe in waiting till once a month or whatever it is to let uh, a, uh, an employee know how they're doing. We've got the monitoring station and some other things uh, in uh, Millennium that basically uh, help do that for you. So if you have a computer in the break room, in the back room, or um, you, know, uh, you allow them just to walk up to the, the front desk or look up computer and log into the monitoring station, uh, they'll get to see uh, their goals. So let's take a look at a program called What If that comes with Millennium. If you don't know where it is, you've lost track of where it is, contact our technical support, and they'll tell you how to download it. Uh, it's free uh, with the, as long as you're a current, up-to-date Millennium client. So let's pop into What If. What If lets you basically go into employee information and just enter some of the information that we've just talked about. What are their goals? You know, what's the current productivity rates? The growth indicator information? How many active guests they have? All the stuff you get out of Millennium. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on the setup of it. We are going to spend a little time right here in the What If projections. What if projections allow you to select an employee? Oh, we'll do Adam. And what it's going to show you, or sample, sample, there, Adam. Uh, and what it's going to show you is on the left-hand side, and I'll zoom in on this a little bit so we can kind of focus. On the left-hand side are the current projections. So the average weekly service sales, the percent retail to service, the number of repeat you know, new clients they have, the retention numbers, their average visits per year, their average service, and average retail ticket. So again, the MA200 report, which we will cover today, uh, has all this information and more in it to help you fill this out for each of your employees. But at the bottom, you'll notice that he's on track right now for $57,000 in service sales and only $4,200 in retail sales. So what's great about once you set these goals with the employees to sit down with them, fill out this what-if information, and then talk to them a little bit about uh, where, they're, uh, where they need to focus. And again, my first thing that I focus on is really nothing about um, raising that service ticket right away. That takes a little bit more because you have to raise prices or you have to become kind of a salesy and know how to add on conditioning treatments or retail sales. That takes a little bit more training. I like to first focus on uh, retention and average number of visits per year. So in this case, if I was sitting down, I'm going to hit edit with Adam. On the right-hand side is where I can play around with these numbers and show Adam how he gets from $57,000 to something much more by the end of the year by making some slight changes in how he focuses on rebooking clients and or how he focuses on success, which is beyond the dollars. Let's go in and look at his numbers. So if you look at repeat client retention, it's at 60%. What was the uh, average in the industry? I just paused. I know you can't talk, but I'm letting you think about it. It's 70%. So he's 10% under the repeat client retention rate. The new client average retention was 35 to 40%. So he's doing okay there. I noticed, though, we're only giving him 10 clients a month, which isn't a lot. So there's a couple things we can look at there. And then, of course, average visits per year. He's at the industry average of five. So we're going to talk to him about, first, how do we get you to go um, from 60% retention to at least 70% retention. 
And there's ways you can do that. There's client loyalty in Millennium where it's going to uh, want uh, that you could do that's going to help all your employees uh, retain clients better because they start to earn points and it's, it kind of cooks them in. Also, really enforces that first visit pre-book. I can't stress how important getting people set into a culture of uh, pre-book. We go to the dentist. Before we leave, we pre-book six months out. So I'm not convinced that we can't pre-book somebody four weeks out or six weeks out. Um, and Millennium, as you know, you can turn on an option as you finish up that transaction. It's actually going to find the openings for you anyway that you can suggest to the client. And then if they se select one of them, it shows up on their receipt, the appointment date. So it's really convenient. We built these things in there to make you guys a well-oiled machine and, and really make this easy and delightful for your clients. So in this case, uh, we're going to bring him up to 70% retention. Whoops. And we're going to try to give him 15 new clients a month um, by him improving. Now, when I do that, instantly these numbers down here change. You'll notice that I've gone from $57,000 to $64,000 in service sales, which is a $7,200 gain or 12% by simply moving up a 10%, which is very little, on my repeat client retention rate. So getting the clients, they're already coming in. Oh, I kind of mixed this up, sorry. I changed this to 15. I'm going to put that back to 10. I, I mixed up talking about new clients when I was really talking about repeat clients. Sorry. Let's put that back to 10 just to keep all things equal. So by him just improving uh, repeat client retention and, and, and focusing in on that pre-book and getting his clients from 60% 6, 60 to 70%, it went up about 4%, so $2,700. Not a huge jump. So he went from 57000 to 60000 this is where I want to show you the importance of pre-book. So in this case, um, the average number of active clients that a service provider typically sees in the industry is 150 to 200 guests a month. So if we've got, and he's on the low end of that, so if we got the 150 repeat guests, which obviously we want to get that closer to 200 too, but we're not going to go through all this, but there's so many little things you can do to just show how you could essentially double his, his service revenue. But in this case, what we're going to do is say, OK, average number of visits per year is five. Well, we want to get up to around seven or eight. Well, let's just go to seven. Let's not even um, jump um, all the way to eight. Let's say two more visits a year, which just by pre-booking and, and, and creating a culture of pre-book in your salon where the service provider is saying, I need to see you in the next four weeks, or I need to see you in six weeks, and walking up and, say, and giving the date, I need to see him the week of um, May 15th, um, that will increase your pre-book percentage dramatically. And now you're passing it off to a front desk that has been educated on the importance of pre-book and how to do it as well. So let's just change that from five to seven, get those two extra visits a year. When I hit tab, now you see the growth. He went from 57,000 to 84,000, which is almost a 50% growth in his service revenue by simply coming, getting his guests to come in two more times a year. So frequency of visit, a culture of pre-book is so important in the service industry. We work so hard and spend so much money to bring in new clients, create all these reward programs, we put all these ads out there, we you know, spend a lot of money, and then our retention rate isn't even uh, 35 to 40% of those clients where we have these repeat guests coming in that have already shown us loyalty, that like what we do, all we need to do is just ask them to come in a little more often. Um, that's the lowest hanging fruit, in my opinion, to rapid growth. Again, 15 to 20%, you could grow in 90 days if you're not, uh, without a, if you don't have a culture of pre-book and in instituting that. So that gives you an idea. Now, one other thing I want to talk about here, and then we, we need to move on again. You, I got to keep myself to a certain pace because again, I would love to talk about. I do an eight-hour day with you guys today, but uh, the retail sales piece of it. What I want you to notice is also when you get guests to come in two more times a year, the side uh, side effect of that is my retail went up 46 percent. Did I change average retail ticket? Did I change retail to service percentage? Which, by the way, is seven percent and horrible. It should be at least 10 percent to 15 percent. So no, I didn't change any of that. So why did the retail go up? Just by getting those guests to come in more often, and just the fact that they only spend about 7% retail to service, proportionally my retail sales will increase as well. 
So it's one of the few growth indicators. By fixing that, you actually fix service and retail all at once. So super important. That's what if. You guys should get on it, play with it. And you know what's great is being able to sit down with that employee, Adam, and let him see, wow, I can increase $30,000 from 57000 by simply uh, you know, writing a recommendation as to when that client should be back and you know, working together with the front desk. That's it. So that's a major 50% growth for that employee by focusing on the one growth indicator. The other reason I love the growth indicators is there's only five of them. Sometimes people try to attack too many things, and they, they have 20 goals. Um, to me, you know, any t anywhere between three and seven would be the maximum number of things that I think a person can really focus on and do a great job at. And um, again, I've mentioned the retention in the pre-booking slash frequency of visit as being the first things they focus on, and that's only three um, growth indicators that are going to make a huge difference uh, in their individual lives and in your salon or spa. Okay, so now we're back uh, in Millennium. Um, and again, we're looking at the pre-book percentage, so important. We want people to be monitoring their goals. So there's a thing called the monitoring station. So if I go up here to the real-time monitoring station, by default it lets me actually go down into the team level. I could say, well, how are all my stylists doing? Um, go to sales or um, hours for sale and pre-book, all this great information. So I, I can see in general, some of this data is old. If I go back in time, it might be better. Let's go back to like March. So I'm getting such great information here. Um, I'm seeing how many hours uh, are available for sale today, tomorrow, this week. The, the, this is one of the few times you actually want to see Millennium tell you zero. There are no hours available because we're fully booked. Um, uh, rebook percentage, how we, how do we do today? Eight out of nine people that walked out were pre-booked before they left, 89%. Uh, yesterday, 13 out of 32. So I'm, I'm keeping score here. They go into the monitoring station, or you go into the monitoring station as the manager, and you can get these great, this great information. Come down here, hit print, share it with the team every day. Here's the next seven days, what it looks like, guys. Here's what the, the uh, percent booked is for the week. Um, you know, here's how many hours. We have 17 hours tomorrow that we need to sell. Uh, and that's a motivation for the front desk. Um, so. Uh, one other thing, we do get the question, what's the difference between pre-book and rebook? So let me explain that very quickly. Rebook is really about future. How well did we do with people that came in today to get rung up? Did they book up an appointment in the future? That's the rebook percentage of that day. Pre-book is based on when they ring up sales. Uh, we have reports that will say, oh, you did this much in pre-book. It's really at that point how many of the appointments that I rung up that day were in the past pre-booked. So one's kind of forward focus, rebook is, hey, how well did we do today rebooking those future appointments? And then the pre-book number for today would be of the appointments we rung up today, how many of those were pre-booked in the past? So that's, that's the difference. It's a little confusing, but they're both um, important numbers. And the rebook is really great here to see how well we are doing at getting people booked before they leave the salon or the spa. Uh, and then we can look at goals. Now, I'd mentioned that I can go down and drill down and actually just look at individual employees as well. So this is how many hours uh, Lillian has uh, um, basically not sold and what her pre-book percentages are. Again, if I go to goals, those are her goals. For, and guess what? Look really, really familiar, right? Growth indicators, average ticket, frequency of visit, retention. Okay. We've had this in the system for probably 15 years. This is a gold mine. And I only know it's a gold mine because I've never found a system that I use besides Millennium because we actually run our company on Millennium, including we know, you know whether you're up to date on your subscription through our own uh, membership model. Um, our support team looks you up and it lets them know whether you're a member or not and, and what your questions have been in the past based on you know, we log them like formulas. So I trust so much of Millennium that we run our company on it. But this is such valuable information to be able to have in real time, and that's why it's called the real-time monitoring station. This employee is not going to wait till the end of the month when it's too late for you to go up and hand them a report. It should be a requirement that they're mo monitoring this stuff daily and certainly weekly. But what if I only want Lillian to be, able to be able to see her information but nobody else's? Under management, security administration,
appointments and then monitoring station. So main topic appointments, subtopic monitoring station, all the different pieces of it can be secured. So the goals tab, hours for sale, screen access, uh, but also the ability to view all employee goals, to view all employee hours, view all employee sales. All you need to do is just make sure you check off only the manager or you know the people that are allowed to see the whole team. Uh, but then anybody else that comes into the screen, if, if they don't, aren't a member of, say, administrator or manager, they're, you know, they're only a member of being a stylist, let's say, um, or service provider, uh, they will only see their own goals and their own sales. Okay, so appointments, monitoring station, and set that security up. And then Lillian, when she comes in, only sees her stuff. So that's the monitoring station. Again, this could be printed, um, printed daily, printed weekly. It's up to you. Okay, so that's individual goals. So we've set... Uh, we understand what the goal growth indicators are. We understand the importance of pre-booking. We've seen what if and how we can motivate employees with that. We saw how easy it is to set up employee goals and let the system help automatically set that up. Now we've seen how to monitor it and actually set security so that only certain people can see it. Um, so now we're kind of set on the individuals. The next thing that I want to cover is, um, well, I'm going to cover one report. Before we jump into that, we're going to look at a couple of reports that you would want to run to be able to set some of your totals up. So if I go to reports, one of the ones I like to run are the sales graph and the MGS10 monthly by employee. Um, if you're setting monthly goals, you could actually look at 2013. Preview that by employee, show both product and service sales. Uh, I'll just select everybody for right now. And let's go in and find an employee with some decent data here. Um, let's back bar. We'll look up Kathy, who we were working with before. So here's Kathy's totals. So I can see each month visibly what her service sales were and down here what her retail sales were. So this is really good to provide the employee, but also if I was setting her goals for this year, I might want to come in and run the MGS-10 and, and see what, she, what that seasonality was and what she did in sales last year to help set the goals for this year. All right. Before we jump into team goals, keep in mind that to me to have a really high performing team, you need uh, managers that get it, that know how to and owners that understand the importance of these growth indicators. You need service providers that embrace pre-booking and uh, writing recommendations and, and doing the things that are, we know uh, predictably increase sales. And we need a powerful front desk. You need a front desk that also understands this, understands the handoff from the service provider to them, the importance of that pre-book. They should be measured on pre-book. Um, so we actually have something under management called front desk productivity. Front desk productivity, if you classify your employees right, allows you to go in and actually um, uh, see how well they're doing at um, how many transactions they did, what, how well they did on uh, booking reservations. So if I come in here and just select um, reception, I think they have it under, and hit select data and go down to a couple of the, oops, I got to go back in time because this is old data. So now I can look and see, for instance, how many transactions Alexandra did versus Jamie, uh, how long it takes them to do a transaction. And this is in seconds, by the way. It's amazing how fast people can book an appointment or ring up in Millennium. Um, shows the hours they worked, um, how many memberships they sold, if that's important to you. Down here is the reservation information, though. How many reservations did they book? How many did they change? What's the average time to do uh, uh, book an appointment? But over here, how well are they doing, for instance, at pre-booking? So there's 219 pre-books for, I think it was Jamie, right? And then if you keep going, um, actually, I skipped it. So and versus the other guy that only did 49. And if I scroll down, I can see this person did 305 pre-books um, and also canceled 134 reservations. So obviously, this person is really busy. How, and they're actually 
booking standings, how many block times they entered, all the stuff that really shows how busy is that front desk, um, how many transactions are they doing, what are they, what are they, how many of them are updating guest profiles, this person's really good at updating guest profiles, this person not so much. Uh, so some really good um, information. And then you can even get booking traffic by um, day of the week. So you can start to see uh, your busiest days. For instance, Friday, um, Michael ended up booking over 200 appointments that day. So some very, very good information there in the um, front desk productivity screen. Um, listed in the, uh, if you notice, um, the way I kind of do these things, I don't spend a lot of time inside the actual PowerPoint. Um, but this PowerPoint will be available. I'll flip through these so you can see basically we're covering all this stuff. But it mentions your front desk productivity screen, uh, making sure that the employees are correctly classified as uh, front desk. Um, and some other reports that we're not going to cover that are really great front desk reports. There's a whole category of reports called front desk um, that's going to give you a lot of great information um, on how well they're pre-booking, um, um, what time of day you know, most of the appointments are being booked. So really good information. So now we're here, uh, team goals. We're going to cover um, how to set goals on revenue, growth indicators, inventory, and some other things. And we're going to cover the MA200, which is, to me, the most important report in all of Millennium. So how do you get to team goals? Just go up to management, team overall goals. Now once I select that, it automatically comes up with the current year. I'm going to teach you a shortcut that would allow you to set your entire salon or spa's goals within 10 minutes of hanging up the phone on this webinar. Um, again, that's assuming that you have Millennium data from last year. If you don't, then there are the reports we give you that you can run for the last few months to sort of get a feel for your average monthly um, based on these totals. But um, if you have past data, um, you can set up your um, Mevo team I'm in Mevo. Wow, I'm in Mevo mode. Uh, Millennium team goals uh, very quickly. So how do you do that? Well, I'm in 2014 here. I'm going to change that to 2013, last year. And look what it did. It brought up all my um, goals for last year. Actually, i got to resize the screen a little bit. There. Um, I hope you guys can see the bottom here where it says show actuals and edit. So I will be covering that. I've got my screen kind of scrunched up. So I go to 2013, and then I click on this box that says show actuals. Now, besides the goal for January, I see the actuals for January. I see the actuals for February and so forth. Then what I do is this is one of the screens in uh, Millennium that we allow you to bring up multiple copies of. So now I'm going to go back up to management, go to team overall goals again, and it brings it up again. But now I'm on 2014. And what I do is, and I'm in a low resolution so you guys can see it on the webinar, but in reality you can actually put these side by side so that if I was setting my January goals for this year, I can actually look at what uh, my goals were in January, actually, I'm sorry, what my actuals were for January um, in 2013, and then just keep flipping back and forth. So I like doing that. So I can look at it here, set it here. So if I saw it was you know, $3,000 is what uh, we did in retail, I might say, okay, I want to try to shoot for $3,300 this year. Um, actually, I've got to hit edit down here, edit. So I, want, I might want to come in here and type 3300 to set that goal. Okay, so that's a manual way you can do it. It's the way I like to do it. Because even if I let Millennium help me, I still want to see what I did last year if I can. Um, so that's, that's the manual way to eyeball it. So you bring up management team goals, set that to 2013 and show actuals at the bottom, the checkbox. Then you also bring up at the same time 2014 and eyeball it back and forth and set your goals. One way to do it. Now uh, I'm going to close out last year. Now that you've seen the, the way to, to look at it, it's going to be easier for me to show you by bringing this back up. Um, now let's just look at some of, some of the goals that we allow you to set on the revenue tab. So here's your different tabs, revenue, growth indicators, inventory, and other. And then you have notes. What's really cool about notes, you can, you can come in here and actually do free form um, notes and type whatever you want. So I actually have to hit cancel if I'm going to do that. So I come into notes, and I can actually just you know, keep notes throughout the year of things that happen. I can insert uh, pictures of graphs and things and, and have kind of a, uh, a diary 
by month of, of, of what happened in the goals that year. So it's pretty cool. So let's go back to revenue. So I can set the obvious things like retail revenue, service revenue, um, gift certificate and package series goals. Um, down here, we let you kind of break it down and get more granular. So I might say, well, what's the service per hour that I want the salon or spa to do? What's the service per hour per provider that I want the salon or spa to do? Percent service client, uh, percent service clients is people that get service that come in and buy retail. What's my retail to total? Retail percent of service that I might want to set. Average ticket I may want to set. And retail units per client. So I would not suggest doing all of these. I, su I suggest, um, as we talked about before, only selecting a few of these things to get people to focus on. Uh, you can always report on them and, and keep them up to date as to where they're at. But as a focus, you know, if you try to set all these things, what's going to end up happening is they're just not going to be able to, your team's not going to be able to focus on, like I said, probably more than seven specific goals. Um, so it allows you to get down to retail units per guest, service units per uh, client visit, amazing, amazing statistics. Now, what I, since we're already in April, if I hit show actuals on this one, um, down here at the bottom where you can't see, if I do show actuals, what's really cool is I, I tell people the team goal screen is like a hidden gem. Because even if you haven't set goals yet, you can come in here and find out so much information about your salon or spa. So if you don't know what your average service per hour is right now, come in here and, and you can see your January, February, May actual. So this salon is doing on average, it looks like by just quickly looking at it, about $180 per hour. Per provider, they're about 30, they're averaging around $30 per hour per provider. So some really cool information by showing actuals that you may not even know. So I love this screen because it's kind of like a, I look at it like a report that's interactive and just gives such great information uh, for you to um, analyze your salon or spa at a very high level and, and, and see how well you're doing right down into the retail per ticket, uh, retail per guest. All right. So if you notice, there's no goal set. I'm going to show you the automated way just like in the individual goals on how to do that. So if I click on the service goals, and I said within 10 minutes of this call, you could set up your overall goals for your entire team if you have data from Millennium from last year. So all you do is select the line you want, come down, hit edit, and there's a button here just like on the individual goal screen called auto goals. So if I select auto goals, it's going to ask me what percent growth for service do you want over previous year. Let's say that it's 15%. I'm going to hit Let's be more realistic. Let's just say 10%. I could have done 15. I could do 20, but let's just do 10%. So I hit OK, and what it just did is figure out that entire year, and even at the end, it's going to tell you overall what your goals should be. So now your overall goal for service is 510,000, um, and so far you're at 135,000 in the first um, four months, three and a half months of the year. Um, so that quickly, I've just set all my goals for service. I'm going to do the same for retail by just hitting auto goals. And I want to grow my retail 15% because I know we can definitely do some easy improvements there. And what else? Let's pick one more thing. I would like my average ticket to grow 10% uh, as well. So there's my average ticket based on the previous year and what uh, my goal should be. So you see on the average ticket, they're actually beating a 10% growth over last year right now. So that's good. Um, the easiest way to look at this besides looking at it like a grid is to go to print. When you click print, it actually takes all that and figures out your percent growth and everything. So right now, I've already set my goals that quickly. Um, it's shown me that my retail in January was 69% of goal. I hit 100% of my service goal. I hit 147% in February of my retail goal, only 93% of my service goal. March was 94 and 80. And currently in April uh, to date, we're at 48% on retail and 68% on service. But obviously, we have a couple weeks left. So um, what's also cool is I can actually report to the team in real time, hey, our goal for next month is $47,896. And our goal for retail is $3,796. So you know by month 
which maps into their monthly goals on what we're trying to accomplish here and what the overall goals of the salon are and what percent we're at. I like to see people print this out um, at least weekly along with everything else that they're doing. So daily, your team should be monitoring their goals and seeing how well they're doing and how well they're keeping up with their average ticket. Um, frequency of visit is better monitored um, monthly or quarterly, and we'll talk about that with the MA200. But retail and service totals and those things, you know, keeping them up to date, like for instance, every day or at least once a week, I should be letting them know in April, hey, guys, we're at 68% of our goal. We're only at 48% of retail. We need to pick it up. We're, we're not there. We want to affect the totals every day. Um, <clears throat> there's even reports in Millennium that allow you to estimate future sales to actually look at what your sales are going to be for the current day to, to say, oh, wow, that falls below what we need to be at. We need to increase that $300, and how are we going to do that? Uh, there's ways, like, for instance, showing overdue clients that would actually show you any clients that were doing for services this week that don't have appointments on the book yet. So look that up, ask questions about it if you want. There's a report called the, under the appointment reports called the recall listing that will actually let you put in a date range and say, show me anybody that I need to call um, and try to get in for an appointment. So there's definitely ways where if I come in today and the afternoon looks slow, I can fill up that book. Um, but again, printing this type of stuff every day or once a week to monitor how April's coming along, we don't wait until May to see that we didn't hit our goal for April. Okay, communication, the two things I told you at the beginning of this call on why um, salons fail to succeed, in my opinion, are trust, building trust between the, the service provider and the front desk and the management and understanding that everybody's on the same page, and communication, communicating these totals and making sure they know um, exactly where they stand and how they're doing. So all I did is hit print to bring all this up. Now, you also know in Millennium, wherever you see these little buttons here, Every grid that you see next to it can be exported to Excel, too. So if you wanted to export some of this information or even in the employee individual screen, you can actually export into an Excel spreadsheet to kind of create your own little uh, you know, document, if you will, to go over uh, with the employee when you sit down with them. So revenue is a rear, rear, rear mirror, right? It's important to know, but what's most important, according to this webinar, is growth indicators and productivity. I've got to hit cancel down here or save. I'll save it. Slide this up. So I'll save those goals. And now we're on um, growth indicators and productivity. This should look familiar to you. So productivity percentage, what's my, what's my goal? Pre-book percentage, what's my goal? New clients per month, new client retention, repeat client retention. This is the stuff that we talked about. I have show actuals turned on at the bottom, so it's educational as well. As soon as you go in, or if you're watching this right now and you've got Millennium, bring up the team goal screen. Go to show actuals, even if you haven't um, um, set your goals yet. It's so much great information. So I'm seeing right now um, that this particular salon is only averaging about 42 to 43 percent productivity right now uh, at the beginning of this year, which obviously we know is not good. The pre-book percentage. Uh, which is going to increase that frequency of visit, isn't bad. Uh, it's not great, but it's not bad, uh, averaging around 40%. Um, I would imagine most of you, unless you really have a culture of pre-book, are probably only at 10 to 15%. If you can get north of 50% pre-book, you will see dramatic increases in revenue because you're taking the people that are loyal and getting them to come in one or two more times a year. And if you have 2,000, the average salon has at least 2,000 repeat guests, so those 2,000 guests spending their average ticket twice, twice more a year uh, could mean the difference between hundreds of thousands of dollars. So pre-book is so important, and monitoring it here is important. But try to get north of 50%, so 50 to 75%, so anywhere from two, out of, uh, two to three out of four guests should be pre-booking before they leave. And it's not impossible, and there's salons that do it all day long, and they're very successful. I get, I'm lucky enough to go into a lot of salons and spas, and sometimes when I walk into them and I find, them, find the, the ones that are actually doing the things that we talk about and doing it to its fullest extent, it's, actually, it's amazing. It really it sends shiver down my spine to see um, what differences these things make, um, and it's not rocket science to pull off. So uh, I'm seeing that on average we're bringing in, let's see, anywhere from 30 to 48 uh, new clients a month. And our retention is really low on those new clients in this particular sample data. 
And then my repeat client retention is hanging up around 80 to 83%, which is actually above the industry average and, and really good. So a couple things that this tells me. The salon is not as busy as they'd like to be. They are only bringing in you know, very random different amounts of uh, new guests per month. Um, their new client retention is low. So there's some kind of problem. Either uh, they're not open enough hours, their uh, staff is so overwhelmed that new clients can't come back, they're not pre-booking enough those new guests to keep, get them to come in more. But numbers tell the, tell the story, and that's what's great about this too, is you can't argue facts. That's what I like about using facts when you sit down with employees or when I sit down with a salon, I just deal with facts. Um, so we can actually set all the goals here for these important growth indicators, and we should. We've got the ability to set inventory goals. So uh, again, even if you don't use this to set inventory goals, so many of you don't realize how much cash you have in that back room or on those shelves that are just not producing results. So I think it's really great to come into the team overall goal screen, go to inventory, show actuals, and see by month how much on average stock you're keeping. So in this case, this salon, I would also run their retail reports to see how much retail they're selling per month. Because my guess is they're overstocked. If they're doing 11,000 and went up to 14,000 and only dropped to 13,000 here, um, that's a lot of money to be keeping on the shelves. Unless I ran reports and saw that this salon, uh, again, this is cost, right? So if I, uh, I should be seeing hopefully 20, uh, to twenty-five thousand dollars a month in retail sales, and I can pretty much tell you I don't think that's the case. Um, we saw before they were selling only like four thousand dollars a month when we were on this revenue tab. So, in my opinion, depending on how much of that is, oh, um, uh, well, actually, no, that is. I was just going to say depending on how much of that is uh, professional versus retail, but that's just retail. That's re we break it out. So, professional supplies, okay, that's fine. That's your color and things that you need to run your business. But over here, this is showing me that my retail stock is quite high for a salon that's only selling around four or five thousand dollars a month. Okay, so um, this is important to look for your own business. I, now, what would I do? I would look at my revenue per month in retail, which gives me a good idea how much I'm selling, and that's revenue, right? The cost on that's half. So if I see a, a thirty-four hundred dollar month, that's really seventeen hundred in cost of things I got out the door. And if I come over here to the inventory and I see things like 11,000, 14,000, then number one, I need to certainly increase my retail sales um, and figure out how to do that. But number two, I'm way overstocked and I need to figure out how to move some of this product out the door to get it to a point where I'm only keeping you know, anywhere optimally a month, but probably realistically three months of inventory on hand. So very good information there as well. The last tab, Other, allows you to actually set goals on things that um, kind of different than, for instance, retail or growth indicators. So, um, for instance, I might want to, um, I see we have a lot of no-shows, so we're starting to use texting and email confirmations to try to reduce those no-shows. So I might have a goal to say, well, you know, look, we're averaging 22, 10, 19, so let's just say 15 no-shows a month. I want to see that below 10. So I can actually set a goal of 10 no-shows each month, see how well we do on that. I can actually... Um, set goals on missed, um, reducing my missed opportunities. In the appointment book, there's a little button called Missed. If you go in there, it's a way for your front desk to log when they were unable to book a guest that was on the phone or in front of them because it, they wanted a, an appointment outside the hours of operation or we simply didn't have enough employees on staff or any openings. So it's allowing me to see missed opportunities where um, we weren't able to fulfill an appointment, and we can actually set goals on that too. And um, we can even set you know, a uh, maximum number of drawer overages and shortages. So they had three overages or shortages in January, two in February, none in March. What's cool about this is, you know, we're not going to worry about a penny, let's say. So under business information, this cash drawer, you can actually set for team overall goals. It even labels it here. What is an acceptable amount a drawer can be over or short? And so we have it set to a dollar. So if it's 50 cents, 25 cents, uh, it's not going to show up here. It's all, that means that there were three and two that were over a dollar over a short. So really good information here. Again, whether you're setting goals or not, 
you're getting great information as the manager, the owner, how many of the how many times in a month they're having these problems with balancing the drawer. Okay? So I mentioned that one of the most important things for us to do, so that's the team overall goals. One of the most important things for us to do also is to look at the MA200 report. The MA200 report is the most important re report, in my opinion, in all of Millennium. It's under analytical reports, and it's called the MA200. Now, before I pop in there, I'm going to show you a couple other reports you should run. Uh, they're actually listed on the slides. The ME215 is a frequency of visit by service class. The reason that's important, remember we kept talking about frequency of visit? Um, frequency of visit is really important uh, to know, but it changes by service class. Again, the frequency of visit that I'm going to expect on hair is very different than nails. And what's so awesome is the ME215 report gives you your, your report card of how many visits you had for coloring, um, nails, uh, haircuts, how many total clients got those services, <coughs> excuse me, and then what the average frequency of visit was. So we're averaging six on color, um, 5.6, which is a little over the industry average on haircuts, and 13.6 on nails. So really good for you to um, benchmark and gauge where you're at across um, service classes. The one below that's super important because that allows you to do the same thing but by employee. So I can see how well Lil is doing on frequency of visit versus Kathy. Um, and again, all this um, helps you have a really good review with the individual employees. Um, so now let's go to the ME200 report. I'm going to run it for all of last year. Um, and I wanted to provide an overall for selected employees as well. That's a really great report because if I, for instance, I just do the stylus. I'm going to want an overall that shows me what the average was across all stylists because then that allows me when I'm sitting with Kathy, let's say, to not point out exactly what Lillian did, but I might point out that the average of all the stylists was 6.5 visits a year and Kathy, you're at 7 or Kathy, you're at 5. So it's really nice to turn on that overall number. How many visits do we want the client to have within a year to be considered retained? I'm going to put that at three. Again, I like to be conservative. As long as that person came back at least three times, I'm not going to count them as you know, completely unretained. So I want to keep that at three. And now it's going through and, and calculating for every stylus. And now it just did for the overall. So the first page that comes up is the overall page for all selected employees. Such great information here. The most important report. When I designed this report, I had been to so many salons where they said, we love Millennium, but I've got to run 10 reports to do an employee review. We want to do one. So I really did some digging and said, okay, what are those most important numbers that I could put on one piece of paper that will allow me to sit with an employee and have a very educated um, review with that employee? <clears throat> so we broke it down to hours and productivity. So how many hours did they work? How many productive hours did they have? So how, what was their uh, overall productivity? And we saw in the team overall goals that it was around 40%, 47% productivity um, overall. Um, then we break down the sales uh, on the ser services on this side and retail on the right side. Now let me just scroll. Let me just um, collapse this thing down so you can see that better. And it's showing my total service sales, my average service per client, my average units of services per client, uh, my average service per week, my average service per hour, average service ticket all that granular information. And same thing here for retail. Then if I go down, I can actually see total tickets I had, total client visits for that uh, year. So almost 6,000 clients visits for, for at least these stylists. The average ticket was $68. 11% of clients bought retail. 703 clients bought retail out of 5,966. I mean, all the information you need to really gauge how you're doing. See a problem here percent of retail to service sales, 7 percent. The industry averages, even when you're doing bad, 10 percent. So this is really awful, to be honest. So this is something that this salon would definitely work on. Your average should be at least 12 to 15 percent. And even that's um, being very conservative. If you're a spa, you're doing upwards of 30 or more percent. So that's the revenue. We want the forward focus growth indicator. So. It's showing me that they saw 927 repeat guests, 
They retained 650. That means at least 650 came in three or more times a year. Um, and the repeat client retention is 70%, right on the industry average. New client service, 332. New retained, 211. New client retention, 63%. That's actually, uh, as a whole, uh, very well, very good. And the average new clients per month was 27 for this particular year. The core clients, 861. Let me explain what that is. So again, when this is being designed, I thought, well, let me come up with something that lets them see whether their net net client uh, is going up or down. In other words, um, I have 927 clients, but I'm only retaining 650 of those. I'm only bring, I only brought in 332 new clients and retain 211 of those, right? So if I add that 211 to the 650, I get 861. The repeat retained and the new retained. 861, what I train people on is, is that number it's showing me more or less than the current repeat client uh, level that I have? So in this case, it's 927. It's saying my core clients, based on retention, is really only about 861. So this shows me that this salon needs to, um, probably because the retention number is actually pretty good, this, uh, they need to generate more than 30 clients a month. That's pretty low. So they need to really focus on a referral program, some advertising to bring in new clients to get that difference between the 861 and 927, say it's 75 clients. We need to make that up or Ultimately, over time, I'll start to lose money because I'm losing guests. So 650 and 211 uh, are my retained clients that add up to 861, which is less than my current repeat client uh, calculation. Average frequency visit per uh, guest is 6.69, which is above industry average. It's actually pretty good. I'm getting closer to that 8 to 12 range that should be your goal. And we can see that pre-book, which really is what drives frequency of visit, is at 35%. If they can get to 50%, this number will be 8. It's almost guaranteed. And if they can get this number to 75%, this number will be closer to 10. And the revenue will be a, a proportion of that. So probably up 60-70%. So, and at the bottom, um, I always joke around that I'm schizophrenic. I like, I'm left brain, I like numbers. I'm right brain, I like colors. So we Gave you a little eye candy there to visibly look at and visualize what the service sales per month is and the retail sales per month. So again, this was the overall. So I can sit down with my stylist and give them the averages for all stylists. Now, if I go to the next page, or well, let's pick um, let's pick again what we've been using, Kathy. Let's go back to Kathy again right here. Now, when I sit with Kathy, all those numbers are just for her. So I can sit there and say, well, here's where you're at versus where everybody else is at. Again, even here, say, well, your core clients are only at 263. You're at 347 in about your current repeat guests. That means you're going to drop to 263 unless we fix this repeat client retention problem. Okay? Um, her average frequency of visit is 6.72, which is, again, pretty good. And she's right on par with the salon, around 36% um, pre-book percentage. And again, the, the eye candy chart. So the MA200 report is a God sent a blessing when you're sitting there with that employee on one sheet of paper, uh, you're able to have a great conversation. Now imagine combining the ME200 report, the what if program I showed you by typing in some of these numbers into what if, and then be able to say, well, Kathy, if we brought you from 6.72 visits to eight, guess what? That would jump you uh, past your goal of $170,000. So it's a very comprehensive, and very factual review um, using these great reports and information. Um, we've covered a lot. I'm going to pop right back into the, um, cover the ME200, uh, team goals, the show actuals, we went over all that. Um, here are the reports, some of the other reports that you can run. Uh, obviously, you're familiar with the MR80, but it's just showing the reports that you could run if you need to manually kind of guesstimate what those goals should be rather than use the, uh, the ability for Millennium to figure it out. Um, these reports I actually showed you, the frequency of visit by service class, um, great reports. The analytical reports are really good. There's, a, there's another analytical report that um, actually shows your retention out six visits. It's called client visits by type. I know, um, it's not client visits by type, it's right here, I just saw it. 
Uh, give me a second. Great other reports here. Lifetime value of a client. You know, your top spenders, who are they? You know, you'll find out that the top 80% of your money comes from 10 to 15% of your clients, and you should know who they are. Um, new client retention by visit. This is the one that actually will show you, since I'm in there, I'll just go to last year and show you real quick. This might be the, this will be the last report I have time to show. We'll go to last year. When I show this to salons, it all of a sudden starts to make sense why, why even if you hit 50% retention on your new guests on their first return visit, what we've been able to show is by the, and I've seen hundreds of salons data, by that sixth visit, you're only between 6 and 12% retention. By that third visit, that retention level starts to drop. See how they started at 67%? We saw 67% in the report we just looked at, remember? So there's the 67%, but watch. that When you get them to try to come back that second time, right? Or the, yeah, the, the return twice, 32%. Then 20%, then 14, 10. So that's why um, that pre-booking is so important. Quality of service is so, so important. Surveying your clients to see how well you're doing. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest problems in the industry as far as um, revenue is um, not getting the loyal guests in enough. So that pre-booking and frequency of visit. And number two, not understanding how bad our new client retention is. That client comes in. And we do not do a good job uh, at getting them continue to come back by pre-booking, having a loyalty system, keeping them interested. Um, by that third visit, we're at 14%. Out of 100 people that came in, 14 are left. And that starts to make sense on why you're not growing at the rate that we'd like to see you grow. All right, so that's a great report, MA210. So get in there, explore. It's not going to bite you. Millennium's got 400 reports. Go in there, play around. Um, See what your estimated sales were versus actuals. It's going to show you how well you're upselling. So many things that I could go over. Um, Brittany, I'm going to actually turn it over to you to um, um, see if we have some specific questions so we can spend uh, at least five minutes on that. Sure, John. You can hear me, right? Just making sure. <laughs> yes, yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, so I just have a little bit of housekeeping to go through with everybody, or as I'd like to call it, housekeeping of things that I really want to review with everyone. I apologize, and uh, you know, again, for the technical difficulties we experienced at the beginning of the webinar, both with the screen and with my audio not coming through. Uh, first and foremost, there is going to be a survey that our marketing team will send out to you. We really do value your feedback, and we would love to see some of your responses and what you thought of today's webinar with uh, our, our lovely founder and CEO, John Harm. Uh, we do have some time, as John said, to answer a few questions, but if you have any other questions after the class, please feel free to email any questions you may have to us at education at millenniumsi.com. You can also visit us on the community site by going to mymillenniumcommunity.com. This is a great place to post questions regarding this class and the software in general. It is also a great way to network with other Millennium users in the industry. We also have remote, on-site, and in-house training available. If you are interested in additional training, please contact myself or Irina in the Education Department. If you haven't already heard, we've changed our company name to Millennium Systems International. You can read more about our name change and our other exciting Millennium-related news on the newsletter page of our website. Just as a very exciting reminder, registration for the experience is open. It is in beautiful Fort Lauderdale, Florida from June 22nd through the 24th, so you can all rid yourselves of the wintertime blues. I know we are all, all tired of the white stuff. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the experience, it is our annual conference. It unites hundreds of in industry professionals from around the world to network, learn vital business strategies, and of course, have lots of fun. The experience has included the industry's top educators and professionals, such as our very own John Harm, Robert Cromines, Tabitha Coffey, Neil Dukoff of Strategies, Matt Beck, and many more. I would like to encourage everyone to check out some of the highlights from the 2013 experience on YouTube to get a feel for what the experience is all about, along with our new Millennium song, Dreams Turn Reality. It's now available on iTunes. The 2013 experience was an exceptional experience, both for myself and the hundreds of businesses that came to further their knowledge. We would love to see all of your shining faces there, and I know John would definitely love to meet most of you. If you're interested in more details, please contact your sales representative. Again, the video and slides will be posted on My Millennium Community by the end of day tomorrow at the latest. 
For those of you who have questions, I would love for you to post them in the chat so we could go ahead and get them addressed. Uh, John, just so you know, there were a few questions that came in earlier on that I was able to answer myself because of my familiarity, my familiarity with goal setting and how important that is. So I'm hoping that um, we do get some more questions that come in, but I was able to answer some of the uh, questions that had come in earlier during the presentation. Okay, so um, how does this work, Brittany? Will it just kick us out? In a couple minutes, or can we take a? No, it'll not. Time? It'll wait until. Yeah, it'll wait until I'm done uh, recording with the presentation, and it'll allow people to answer some questions. It'll end whenever I actually end the presentation, so we can stay on for a All few right, more so moments anybody, and wait for some questions. Yeah. So, so if anybody have, oh, sorry, Brittany. So I'm just trying to no. rush this a little bit so they can ask some questions. So, um, uh, if you have any specific questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat now, and uh, I'll try to answer a couple of them. Um, I also am very sensitive to people's valuable time, and uh, my feelings will not be heard if you need to drop off. Um, again, the webinar uh, is recorded and will be available in the archives as well. But we'll wait a couple minutes here to see if you have some questions. Lori, that's a perfect question. Can you save the slides, and if so, how do you do that? Once the webinar is posted on My Millennium Community, it will be posted with the slides in PDF format. You'll be able to download those slides and use them simultaneously with the presentation. You're very welcome, Lori. Not a problem. Does anyone else, as John said, have any questions in, in relation to the presentation that he covered today with goal setting and all the, the great information that he brought to you guys today? John, Linda asked, can you preset the pre-booked tab? Uh, okay, and I also see a question on where do I find the recall listing? It's a great report, both very good questions. So, um, a couple different things. One is um, if I go to business information, one of the things under preferences is your ability to define kind of what you um, want pre-book to be counted as in the monitoring station. So if I go to preferences, options, monitoring station, I can actually decide what that rebook definition is. So do, uh, is it a, only if a future appointment's booked regardless of the employee? Or um, if Lillian's looking at her pre-book, does the future reservation have to be booked with the same employee. Um, so there's an option that you'd want to be able to set there. The other thing that you can set is when rebook can occur up to. Now I like it to be flexible. I mean, we would all love to say rebooks only if they book, you know, while they're standing in front of us. After that, it doesn't count as rebook. The reality is your clients are going to say, you know what, um, I'm going to have to check my book. I'll get back to you this afternoon or I'll get back to you tomorrow. Um, I see both sides of it. I think that you should really push strongly and say, listen, we can always reschedule, but you know, we're very, uh, it's very hard to get a, an appointment on a Friday, and it, the computer's showing me that we have one on May 15th. Let's lock that one in, and then you just call me today, uh, tomorrow when you look at your schedule. If that doesn't work, uh, we'll adjust it. So you really push hard for that pre-book, but um, you actually have the ability to say that even, you know, maybe make it one day after. They have up to a day after to call and, and still count as a rebook. Um, so that's one place that you can set where in the monitoring station rebook area, you kind of have a little bit of leeway as to what counts um, as a rebook. The other thing is, is be aware that when you're in the appointment book, um, the appointment book, uh, when you're doing a, um, putting an appointment in, it actually has a, a manual way to uh, mark something as pre-booked. And that's, that's something that's going to, when they ring up the appointment, uh, make that transaction a pre-book transaction and show up in the pre-book percentages and on the pre-book report. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, there's a lot of logic built into that where it's going to automatically set it based on um, if that person had an appointment today, um, based on how far in the future it is. So it, it'll, it'll automatically check it. If it's a standing, it's automatically a pre-book. So some things in there where we're trying to give the benefit of the doubt to the pre-book. Uh, the question was, where can I find a couple of these reports? So let's go to the appointment reports. Um, the, there's two different rebook reports, and they're both great. It's just depending on um, what you are trying to accomplish. 
there's uh, AQ070 under the appointment reports. That's the appointment recall listing. It lists clients who are due in for services but have not have booked an appointment in a certain range. There's another one called user defined recall listing. And that lists clients who are due in for service but have not booked any appointment within a user specified number of weeks, even if it's not uh, related to the last appointment that they had. So uh, it's a lot of wording. Um, both, run both reports to get a feel for what, which one works best for you. Um, user defined is pretty cool in that like I could say, uh, put the date range in for this week, okay? And just to show how easy this is, look, this week, user defined uh, recall listing. I always tell people start with the big ticket items first. I would start with corrective color, all these color services, right? Um, I'd select them and move them over, let's say, and hit OK. So I'm going to start out by trying to get people to come in that um, are going to spend the most money. And obviously, they, they, they say that they're chemically addicted, right? They, they, they're they going to know when you uh, send them the email or call them that, oh, my God, my roots are showing. I do need to get back. So they're an easy win, I think, So and it's a higher ticket item. So how many weeks ahead would you like to look to see if the client uh, if the client returned? Let's say two weeks. It's going to make sure that they don't have that color booked in the next couple weeks. And when I hit OK, there's your playlist. I call it a playlist. Now your front desk just starts going after these people. It shows the service they got, gives you their home phone, work phone, mobile phone, when they were last in, who they went to, and whether they have a future appointment booked. And if so, uh, what's the date? So the easy ones to go after are no future appointment at all, these here. So to me, this is an awesome report. It's the playlist for the front desk to say, listen, when you come in in the morning and we don't look busy, you run this report, you go after the, uh, the clients that, uh, to help fill up Lillian's book this afternoon. Um, so they're both under uh, the appointment reports. Um, great pre-book analysis reports under here too, pre-book analysis, AQ150. It actually lets you judge, or, or judge, that's a terrible word. It actually allows you to uh, uh, value, evaluate the person who booked the appointment or who it was booked with. So is Lillian, the service provider, doing a good job of encouraging that pre-book? Let's check that out. I would select this. If I want to see, hey, is that front desk doing a good job of actually pre-booking people, then I would look at who it was booked with. So there's years of data in here. The, um, you know, as you all know, we're building Mevo, and we're very excited about having a cloud product and something that will work on a Mac and the touch, and, and it works on PC, and um, all the cool things about Mevo. But when I go on uh, Millennium and just see the, the vast amount of data that you're able to get to and the amount of thought that we've put into this, and you know, obviously we're pulling a lot of this stuff into Mevo, but you've got a tool that will really blow your mind if you just really get in there and start digging around and seeing what it can do. Um, it's, it's really amazing. So those are a couple really good examples of how to get to pre-book, how to get to um, uh, set what I consider a pre-book for that monitoring station, and also go in there and go after those guests that are on the recall list that we should be trying to get in um, uh, to, help, to help grow our business. John, we just got a question from Havan, if I'm pronouncing that right. I, I hope that I am. We are running a rebook contest in the front, uh, at the front desk. What is the best way to track that? So a rebook contest for the front desk, right? Correct, yes. Okay, so the, the, the report I just ran would be the best way to do it. Also, the monitoring station, if you just want to go in and just eyeball it, go in there, and uh, but then you'd have to um, select each, each front desk employee to see how they're doing. So you go hours for sale and rebook, and then you would just look at, for instance, it goes all the way back to um, this week, last week, this month, and you would select uh, the individual front desk people. Like uh, I think I remember Jamie was a front desk person. Uh, oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. This is going to, wait, this is going to actually look for Jamie to do the service. So this is not the best place. It's the report I just ran. Let's go back in there. They would want to run the, uh, where'd it go? Pre-book analysis. So pre-book analysis. There's also, um, I'm blanking on it. Maybe it's on a front desk report. So let's go there real quick. There's another one on rebook as well. And jump in, um, Brittany, if you remember. 
I know I'm a little rusty on some of this stuff, but here's where you can actually get uh, front desk pre-book analysis. That's probably even better. So a um, lot of good information here in the front desk productivity too. It actually show you on average how uh, many weeks in advance an appointment is booked, and um, so that's a that's a good report um, to run. Uh, if you're looking at the salon as a whole, then the monitoring station is great. Uh, when, but once, as soon as you select a specific employee, um, like front desk employee, it's not going to work right because it's going to look for them to be doing the service. So the FDP05 also, Brittany. Yes, perfect. I'm going to make sure I type that in there as well for them. So this is showing you exactly, you know, services that were booked, how many were pre-booked, um, by um, um, who booked it and who it was booked for. So Courtney did the booking for Liliana. So I think this is going to give, these are the two front desk people. So I think this is going to give uh, the best example for what he's looking for. Any yeah, other questions? I would agree. I don't think there are any, John, because uh, no other questions have come in during the course of you covering the existing questions. So I'm going to um, assume that everyone else has been done. We did get a comment from Amir saying that uh, the information was amazing and that, you know, loved, loved the webinar presentation. So I thought that would be nice to share with you as well, um, that the information was great, helpful. Great. So. I, love, I love the good news. One of the last things on my slide was to, to make it fun. And that's one of the things that we're trying to think of as a company is goal setting so important. And I like to hear that he's actually doing a front desk, uh, I call it a challenge, right? I'm actually getting certified in gamification, the, which is really the science of making this goal setting and goal attainment fun. And so anytime you can set up challenges, you know, maybe, um, you know, uh, see what, you know, the stylus against the nail tech to see whose frequency of visit goes up to highest percentage or average ticket. Um, seeing how, you know, involving the front desk, if you guys get up to 50% pre-book, it's drinks with the boss. You know, there's things that you can do that really uh, make it fun. And um, so all these little challenges are good. And there's even people that um, I've seen have their front desk levels set based on quarterly how well they do at pre-booking, selling gift cards, and upselling on retail. So I could go from a level one and be making $8 an hour are uh, at to a level two, and all of a sudden I jump to ten dollars an hour. And if I get to level three, I'm twelve dollars an hour. Uh, but then I could drop back down to level two if the following quarter my pre-book slips. So there's a lot of ways you can even set up interesting challenges, but also interesting leveling and ways to encourage the front desk to be better. And and the the, the math proves out that those couple more dollars an hour are insignificant to the growth you'll get by them doing these things. So. I really appreciate all of your time. Again, I do value your time. You guys are busy people, and Monday's your day off. You guys need to relax. And uh, I, I really enjoy doing these, and then I'll continue to do a lot more of them. I hope I see you at the Millennium Experience, uh, again, June 22nd to the 24th. Uh, you won't regret it. Everybody that goes absolutely loves it. It blows them away. I think your concept of what it will be is nothing like it is. It's fun. It's it, in dynamic, very informational, uh, and really great for the front.